Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to our second midweek service. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Amen. I'm so very glad that you're here. Uh, we can still worship even though a small group in spirit and truth. In fact, I just did enjoy the atmosphere here. And it's the opportunity for us to, to grow in our understanding of the incarnation and even be more prepared for us. Uh, for Christmas and just receiving the, the message and the truth of Christmas in our lives. So again, I'm glad you're here. And we begin now by singing the first hymn. sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Almighty good Father, by the advent of your Son into the world, the kingdom of heaven, now is open to all who believe in him, grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may believe in him with our whole heart and serve him in our daily lives so that when he comes again in glory, we may be, we may by your mercy be gathered into his eternal courts with all the faith. This we ask in his blessed name. Amen. The next hymn, verse.
second lesson is found in the book of Exodus, chapter 40, various verses. In the first month in the second year, on the first day of the month, the tabernacle was erected. Moses erected the tabernacle. He laid its bases and set up its frames and put in its poles and raised up its pillars. He spread the tent over the tabernacle and put covering of the tent over it as the Lord had commanded Moses. He took the testimony and put it into the ark and put the poles on the ark and set the mercy seat above on the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle and set up the veil of the screen and screened the ark of the testimony as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then the cloud covered the tent of the meeting, and the glory of the Lord was filled with filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tent of the meeting, because the cloud settled on it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Throughout all their journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the people of Israel would set out. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not set out till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day, and fire was in it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Psalm 86. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am godly. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all the day. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving. Bowing steadfast love to all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. In the day of my trouble, I call upon you. You answer me. There is none like you, like you among the gods, O Lord, Lord nor, nor are there any words like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love toward me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. O God, Insolent men have risen up against me. A band of ruthless men seek my life, and they do not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant, and save the son of your maidservant. Show me a sign of your favor, that those who hate me may see and be put to shame, because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. 
He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead them, those that are with young, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and marked off the heavens with a span and closed the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the <clears throat> mountains and scales of the hills in the balance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Join with me, we beseech you to hear us, good Lord. We pray for your people here and everywhere that you would inspire. The verses, I saw in the night visions and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man and he came to the ancient of days and was presented before him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory is of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. And from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The next hymn.
That's what you and I really desire, for God to be with us, for God to come and dwell with us, to come in person, to come in the person of Jesus Christ. Because you see, we are cut off from him by the curse of sin. We are in exile here in this world, away from the one who is our true home. We pray to be delivered from the isolation and the emptiness of life apart from him and his gifts. Our entire hope and goal as Christians is to be restored in perfect communion and fellowship with God. Advent reminds us that our God is one who does come to be with us. But Christ did not first appear at Christmas. I think that even many Christians are tempted to think that the Son of God wasn't doing much before his conception in the womb of the Virgin Mary. That he didn't actually come on the scene until the New Testament. The whole idea of Jesus in the Old Testament seems to us to be a bit foreign. But in fact, the Son of God has been intimately involved with his people from the very beginning of time. The scriptures say that all things were created through the one who is the Word, capital W-O-R-D. And that it was created through the one who was the Word. And Christ, God the Son, appeared to his chosen people in pre-virgin birth form many times in the Old Testament before he became a true man. At the bidding of his heavenly Father, the Son of God descended to this earth in various times and places to be with his people Israel to speak his word to them, to guide them, and to deliver them from their enemies. Last Wednesday, we heard how Christ came down to earth and appeared to Moses in the burning bush to announce the coming freedom and release of the Israelites from their slavery to the Egyptians. In today's Old Testament reading, we encounter the Israelites after they have been freed, as they now are traveling in the wilderness. And we learn of how God was present with his people in the form of a cloud that filled and covered the tabernacle. Now the tabernacle was like a mobile temple, a large tent for worship. Think, if you will, of a huge circus tent. And it was there that the people worshiped as God prescribed. And within it was the most holy place where the Ark of God was located. And even as God was present in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt, so too he was present among his people as a cloud in the tabernacle, a cloud that had the appearance of fire by night. And when the cloud rose Above the tabernacle, the Israelites would journey. They would march. And when the cloud, the 
fire remained on the tabernacle, they would stay where they were. The presence of the Lord in the wilderness was none other than the Son of God, Christ the Savior, as we shall see more clearly in just a moment. We heard in the reading from John's Gospel this evening that no one has ever seen God, but that Christ, the only begotten Son of God, has revealed Him. This cloud, then, was the revelation of God in His Son. It was the real presence of Christ, the Creator entering into creation for the sake of His people, to lead them to the riches of the promised land. It was a living prophecy on how the heavenly and the earthly would come together in a permanent and enduring way in the conception of Jesus and in his birth at Bethlehem. The Apostle John teaches us this in these very important words. The Word W, capital W, O R D, that is, the Son of God, became flesh and dwelt among us. That word dwelt is actually another grammatical syntax form of the word for tabernacle or tent. So we could translate John's statement this way. The Word became flesh and tabernacled among us. He covered us. Jesus set up his tent in our midst. For the same Lord who dwelt in a tent of animal skins has taken on our human nature flesh and blood, body and soul. The glory of the Lord dwells in human skin in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. And the tabernacle that Jesus descended to fill was our human body and soul. And he did so not just for a little while, but for all the rest of eternity. In the wilderness, the cloud would sometimes rise out of the tabernacle, but in Christ, the divine and human natures are essential. They're joined forever, so that God the Son is and always will be a true man our brother. And the human tabernacle which he now inhabits is his dwelling place forever. That helps to explain why Jesus said, destroy this temple, referring to his human nature, his body, and in three days I will raise it up. God and man come together forever in Christ so that all humanity might be raised up to the glory of God. Jesus is himself the glory of God, full of grace and truth for us. We see this fellowship foreshadowed in the cloud that descended on the tabernacle in the wilderness. Clouds are often connected with Christ in the New Testament as well. For instance, when Jesus revealed his glory to the disciples on the Mount of Trans uh, Transfiguration, a cloud came and enveloped them. 
When Jesus ascended into heaven, it was a cloud that hid him from the disciples' sight. And what are clouds made of? But water. It is through water that Christ is present for us in baptism to make our bodies his temple, a tabernacle for his spirit. It's also written about Jesus that he will come in the clouds with power and glory to bring the redemption of his people to its fulfillment. Revelations 21 describes the fulfillment of our Advent hope to come on the last day. Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. No more exile or isolation. We will experience the fulfillment of the Lord's name, Emmanuel. God is with us. Therefore, as we prepare in this Advent season, both for Christmas and the second coming of Christ, let us be like the children of Israel traveling with the cloud of the tabernacle. Let us faithfully and patiently follow our Lord Jesus across the wilderness of this fallen world, through the grave and into the resurrection in the promised land of the world to come. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ